In this video I'm going to cover how to make a multi-tiered banner just like the three you see right here. They're really easy to make and once you make this one selected right here, these other two are super fast to make. They take just a couple seconds so it's kind of a cool way of working. The font I'm using is called Gandhi Sans Bold and I will place a link in the description for you to download it. It's totally free. And as far as your workspace you're going to want to make sure Window Appearance is selected and Window Stroke is selected. So I have these set up just as a reference point and then I copied over this rectangle but how to make a rectangle like this if you don't know how. It's just this button right here, the rectangle tool. The default keyboard shortcut is M and you can just draw it to be whatever you want. You can adjust the fill and the stroke right here. Just double click on them, make them whatever color you want. I'm going to leave it black and white because it's really easy, but feel free to make it whatever color you feel like making your banners. And the stroke, I put my weight up to four point. Feel free to size the stroke however you want to get the appearance you're trying to get. But once again, I have it set to four point. And you might even want to set the corner here under stroke. It's the second one down right below cap. The middle one is called round join and instead of uh, square corners, so if I zoom in right here, you can see these corners are square. If you have this selected and you hit round, it just rounds the edges. I generally tend to prefer how that looks, but it's up to you. Also, I am working with Smart Guides on. And Smart Guides is like if you see when I go over this, it shows this green path or anchor. It just kind of helps you move stuff around, and I'm going to use it quite a bit in this tutorial. To turn that on on a PC is Control U, and to turn that on on a Mac is Command U. So let's just get going here. I have the font typed out to say multi. I'm just going to delete this one. And one thing I'm going to do is just move this right to the middle here. And kind of the cool thing about Smart Guides is as you can see, right when I'm in the middle, it'll say intersect because this is intersecting the middle. So that's just a really quick way to quickly get this centered, at least horizontally. Alternatively, if you go to Window Align and have that on, right here is the Align window. If you have these both selected with a selection tool, which is V, you can just hit this button right here, Horizontal Align Center. You can also hit this button right here called Vertical Align Center, but I find it tends to move type a little bit too high, but I usually just hit it again and use my arrow key to knock it down a couple until it looks relatively centered. Another thing I forgot to mention at the beginning here, on the text, you're going to want to make sure that you align this text to center, and that button is right up here at the top under Paragraph, the middle one, Align Center. Alternatively, you can do that by clicking the Paragraph thing right next to the character. It's right here. Hit Paragraph, make sure Align Center is selected. That comes in handy if you're trying to change this later on. You want to make sure that it actually stays in the center so you don't have to reposition everything after you're done. Now that this is done, I'm just going to group this. It's going to make the next steps a little bit easier. And I group them using Control G on a PC or Command G on a Mac. And then I'm going to hold down Alt. And when I'm dragging down and holding Alt, I'm going to hold down Shift as well. And if you're on a Mac, it's Option instead of Alt. And by holding down Shift, it just keeps on this perfect horizontal plane. And just drag it down however far you want it to be so that the distance between these two banners looks pretty much right on for what you're trying to go for. This is just matching this, so that works pretty good for me. And the next thing I do, just to work a little bit faster, once you've got this banner positioned the way you want it, all you have to do is select both the items and then hit hit Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac and that'll duplicate both the item itself and the movement that you just created. So this is a really fast way to create as many of these banners as you want for the length of your overall multi-tiered banner. And now to make this little insertion right here for this banner look, I'm just going to go to this top one right here and I'm going to hit the plus sign and what the plus sign does right here you can see the pen tool has changed to add anchor point tool. Another way to do this is if the pen tool is right here, you can just hold down with the mouse button and then instead of pen tool, go right down here to add anchor point tool. And then I'm just going to hit somewhere on this side or on the left side if that's where you're trying to make the insertion, it doesn't matter at all. Just hit it and then I'm going to hit A and A is the keyboard shortcut for the direct selection tool. After doing that, you can see once I'm in the middle here, it's drawing this green line right to the center. So I know that no matter where I start, as long as I drag it to this green line, which is the middle intersect point, we're right on center. So that's looking the way we want it to. And now I actually want this bottom one to look just like this. The quickest way to do this, I'm going to select this and holding down Alt once again with the selection tool. I'm going to start dragging it down and then I'm going to hold Shift which keeps it on this perfect path. I'm just going to drag it right about here so we can quickly rotate it. When you move your cursor right over the corner or right here like the center little square, it turns into these two arrows going left to right so you can quickly just rotate it. Holding Shift just make sure instead of being on any degree of angle, it's a perfect degree of angle. Do it until it goes 180 like this. And then drag it up holding down shift. You don't need to hold out for this. Just drag it until it lines up perfectly right over the previous one. And I'm actually just going to click off of it and then select this one in front. 
I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to just click this using the selection tool. And I'm going to right click or control click if you're using a Wacom tablet, something like that that doesn't have a second button, and ungroup. And then I'm just going to take this text and flip it around like that. Once again, holding shift while rotating. And then I'm just going to move it until it's right around the middle here. Just using my arrow keys. Looks pretty good. So this is looking pretty good. We're almost done here. I'm just going to grab this middle box and I'm going to hold alt and shift and just drag it up here and then I'm going to ungroup it. I'm going to delete this type because we don't need it. We're going to make these back boxes right here just like this. I want to make sure that this box is in front just to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to right click and then arrange and then bring to front. And this time I'm just going to drag this box while holding shift right over the top of this first top box. Once you have that done and it's lined up perfectly, use the direct selection tool, which is A, has a keyboard shortcut, and we're going to find the two anchor points. When you have smart guides on, the anchor point will be highlighted. Click the first one up here and then hold down shift and click the second one. Holding down shift allows you to select both. And then just take this and drag it right here down onto the second box until you see it hits intersect. Just drag it right onto that bottom point. It should be snapping in place for you. And then go ahead and let go. So you can see this has created essentially what will be this back banner right here. Now that that's done, we can just click this box. We can right click it, arrange, send to back. And then we can just click this box again, holding alt, start dragging it down and then hold shift until it's lined up perfectly over the middle two boxes. And then just go ahead and let go. And then do it one more time. Click this box right here, hold alt, while you're dragging it, hold down shift so that it's on a perfect little line up here. Get these lined up. As you can see, that top box there has the green intersect line. That's telling us that this is perfectly lined up. We're good to go, let go. So we're almost done here. Next, I'm just gonna select these boxes by holding down shift to select more than one at once. So this selects the boxes that are just in the back here. We're gonna turn it to gray, so it creates a sense of depth a little bit. And then I'm just gonna double click the fill right here, which will bring up the color picker pick whatever color you want. I'm just going to do a gray, hit it, and we're good to go. So we're almost complete. Next, I'm going to use the selection tool, which is once again V. Select this whole thing, and we're going to group this. And I'll tell you why in just a second. To group it, hit Control-G on a PC or Command-G on a Mac. And grouping this is important because once we apply an effect to this, the group will make the effect apply the same across all the different elements in this group. So the text, the banners, everything will look very consistent. If you didn't group it, the effects would affect each element separately, and it wouldn't look like a cohesive piece. So make sure you group it. And then you can just change this text to be whatever you want. I'm just going to be like, whoa, banners are easy. And there we go. And once again, this is all grouped. So I'm just going to select this entire thing, hold down Alt and Shift, and drag this guy down. And this is where it's a lot of fun because applying effects once you got this base thing done is super easy. So I'm just going to select this all with the direct selection tool. Go to Effect, Warp, and then we're going to pick Flag. Flag's right near the middle. Select it and hit this Preview button in the lower left. And I have this set to 4% bend. If you do it really crazy, this thing freaks out. So keep a number pretty low most of the time. 4% looks pretty good. As you can see, it takes just seconds. And all the type, you can go negative 2 for the reverse. It all is lined up perfectly. All the text is lined up perfectly on this effect because we did group this. So it's really, really easy to go in there and apply effects. And if you have it highlighted in your appearance window, you can also toggle this effect on or off by clicking the eyeball next to the warp flag. Or this applies to any kind of effect you apply. So if I hit that eyeball, it turns it off. If I hit the eyeball again, it turns it back on. And you can also click the effect and change all the settings you want. Or you can also change the actual effect type, like arc doesn't look too good on this, but it is kind of an interesting thing. So just play around with something that you think looks cool. You can go through all these different effects to see how it applies to what you're doing. And if you want to make something just like this one right here, that's also super easy to do. So I'm going to use the selection tool once again. Just select this whole thing, hold Alt and Shift. And then while this is selected, we're going to go down over here. The tool we're looking for is called the Shear tool. Usually the Scale tool is selected. It'll be right underneath the Rotate tool. And it's usually right around the middle section of your toolbar once that's open. So just hold down this. It'll usually say Scale tool and then select the Shear tool. And then go to one of the corners here. I'm going to go to the right corner and just drag it up and hold shift so that it stays nice and perfectly. If you don't hold shift, it can kind of freak out like you see it's doing right here. But once you hold shift, it'll stay nice and straight. You can give it a little bit of a warp up and it looks really nice, super easy. And your text will still, if I just type this, you can tell it still follows that path perfectly. 
and also as one last super quick tip, using your direct selection tool, which is an A keyboard shortcut by default. If you notice on these two little points here, this top one looks like it might be going out a little bit further than the bottom one. You can just hover over it and then you'll select it and use the keyboard shortcut arrows. And I usually just move it over like four or five keyboard clicks using the arrow tools. And I count it because that way I can do it down here and I knew I went four up here. So I can go four over here and you can tell that way it's the same on both ends. You can keep on just like adjusting these a little bit to get them exactly the way you want. But sometimes these points get pretty exaggerated so you just want to use the direct selection tool and you can kind of keyboard arrow them left or right until it lines up pretty close to what you're trying to do. But hopefully this video was helpful for you and if it was please hit like and favorite and if you want to see more videos like this consider subscribing. I do my best to keep new videos coming every week. Thank you so much for watching.